During World War II, Lucky Luciano aided U.S. naval intelligence by giving the okay to his dock workers to talk to them, to be the eyes and ears for naval intelligence. For his act of patriotism, he was released from jail. This happened in February of 1946, and was on the condition that he returned to Italy and never set foot in the U.S. again. Imagine being in the thick of World War II, with Nazi spies lurking at every turn, and the U.S. government is so desperate to protect its vital ports that it makes a deal with an unlikely ally, the Mafia. The Duquesne Spiring was one such group. Uncovered in 1941, its 33 German agents were sentenced to a total of 300 years in prison. Hitler wanted to know every American secret, but dug up only grief for his blundering agents. You'll get the same, Uncle Sam warns all potential spies. The U.S. teamed up with mobsters to safeguard American shores from Axis saboteurs. Yes, it really happened and it's one of the most secretive, controversial alliances in American history. Today, we're diving into Operation Underworld, the clandestine collaboration between the U.S. government and organized crime during World War II. The story is as unbelievable as it is fascinating. So let's start with the setup. During World War II, the U.S. faced a growing threat of espionage and sabotage. But just a year later, in 1942, a mysterious fire destroyed the famous USS naval vessel, the newly named USS Lafayette. It sent shockwaves through New Yorkers, as well as the intelligence community, with many speculating that this was the work of enemy agents and that American ports were at risk. The Axis powers, especially Nazi Germany, had extensive spy networks aimed at disrupting supply chains critical to the war effort. The ports of New York, which were essential for transporting war materials to Europe, were prime targets. The Office of Naval Intelligence, ONI, was responsible for safeguarding these ports. But traditional security measures weren't enough. They needed an edge, something or someone that could keep a close eye on the docks and ensure no enemy spies could sabotage their operations. And that's when they turned to a surprising group for help, the Mafia. Organized crime had control over much of the New York waterfront. Mobsters held sway over labor unions, dock workers, and the very infrastructure the U.S. military needed to protect. So despite the obvious moral and ethical concerns, the ONI made a secret pact with some of America's most notorious criminals. One of the key figures they approached was none other than Charles Lucky Luciano. Luciano was born Salvatore Lucania on November 24, 1897, in Sicily, but came to New York in 1906. As a schoolboy, Luciano already acted like he was in the mob. He demanded younger kids pay him their lunch money as protection. Luciano, even though he was behind bars at the time, was still a powerful figure in the criminal underworld. The ONI struck a deal with Luciano promising to reduce his prison sentence in exchange for his cooperation in securing the docks. Luciano's influence, even from prison, helped ensure that the Mafia would aid the government in protecting the ports from sabotage. In exchange for this cooperation, Luciano was eventually released and deported to Italy after the war, a controversial move that would come back to haunt the government. In 1931, Lucky Luciano facilitated the killing of the two mob bosses in New York. Joe Masseria and Mr. Maranzano. With his rivals removed, Luciano became New York's top mob boss and began dramatically changing how the mob operated. Another significant figure in this clandestine alliance was Meyer Lansky, the notorious Jewish mobster with strong ties across both Jewish and Italian organized crime families. Lansky was key in bridging the gap between different factions of the criminal underworld and shrink cooperation between groups that might otherwise have been at odds. Lansky may have been the only Jewish gangster who could order a hit on a made man and not have to justify his action. Carl Syphakis explains, there was a godfather of the National Crime Syndicate, the parent organization of what became the American Mafia, and thus the real godfather of the American Mafia. He was called with total respect, the little man, 
and Luciano's advice to his followers was always listen to him. His strategic skills combined with his network of contacts allowed him to help the ONI gather crucial intelligence about Axis espionage activities and potential sabotage efforts on the dock. Then there was George Hunter White, a federal agent who played a pivotal role in Operation Underworld. White was known for his fearless and often unorthodox methods of gathering intelligence. One of his more infamous acts involved drugging New York gangster August Little Augie de Gracio with THC-laced cigarettes without his knowledge. White's goal was to see if the drug would make Del Gracio more willing to share information. The experiment was both controversial and ethically questionable, but White's bold methods showed just how far Operation Underworld was willing to go to secure American ports. White's work in Operation Underworld foreshadowed his later involvement with the CIA, where he became notorious for leading Operation Midnight Climax program where unwitting civilians were drugged with LSD in an effort to study mind control. And what of George White, the man who helped the agency in so many of its programs? He would retire here to Stinson Beach, California. And shortly before his death, he wrote to his boss at the CIA, Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, and summed up his career by saying, it was fun, fun, fun. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, and cheat? steal, deceive, rape, and pillage with the sanction and blessing of the All-Highest. But during the war, his focus was on infiltrating the criminal underworld and gathering critical intelligence to help counter Axis espionage. But how did this clandestine operation actually work? The Mafia used its influence over labor unions and dock workers to prevent strikes that could disrupt port operations. Strikes were a huge concern during the war, as even a brief disruption in shipping could delay essential supplies heading to the front lines. The mobsters ensured that workers stayed in line and they used their own intelligence networks to keep tab on the suspicious activities around the docks. The Mafia's extensive network helped identify potential spies and saboteurs before they could act, providing the ONI with valuable information that traditional law enforcement couldn't access. Operation Underworld was a major success in preventing sabotage and keeping the ports secure. American Lieutenant Paul Alfieri was in one of the first intelligence teams to arrive at the port of Lakata on the island. On arrival, he was met immediately by an extremely helpful Sicilian. The young man showed Alfieri to the secret hideout of the Italian Naval Command in a beachside holiday villa, and then provided gunmen to help him attack it. However, it wasn't without controversy. The idea of the U.S. government partnering with mobsters, even in the name of national security, was bound to raise eyebrows. And raise eyebrows it did, especially when the operation was finally revealed to the public years later. But how exactly was Operation Underworld exposed? The operation remained a well-guarded secret for decades, known only to a select few within the government. However, it eventually came to light in the 1970s after a series of journalistic investigations and the declassification of wartime documents. The trigger was a renewed interest in the Mafia's influence in American society, sparked by rising public fascination with organized crime thanks to movies like The Godfather and increased media scrutiny of mob activities. Reporters began digging into old files, and historians started connecting the dots between the government's wartime efforts and this unlikely alliance with organized crime. It wasn't until the late 1970s that the full scope of Operation Underworld was revealed. In 1977, the declassification of wartime records provided historians with access to previously secret government files, detailing the Mafia's role in safeguarding New York's ports. During the Mafia's time as unlikely guardians for American safety, there were no incidents similar to the sinking of the USS Lafayette. Although there was also no conclusive evidence that the sinking was arson and not an accident. However, this remarkable deal certainly worked out well for Lucky Luciano and his mob. This bombshell revelation made headlines, leading to a wave of media coverage. Journalists uncovered documents that described how the U.S. Navy had worked with key Mafia figures like Luciano and Lansky, using their connections to maintain security on the waterfront. 
the public reaction to this revelation was understandably mixed. On the one hand, there were those who saw the operation as a necessary wartime measure. The country was in the midst of a global conflict and desperate times called for desperate measures. The Mafia's influence was so powerful in this area that US naval intelligence saw no other option than to ask for their help to protect the very city they had at times terrorized. By securing the ports and preventing sabotage, Operation Underworld arguably played a critical role in the Allied war effort. For some, the ends justified the means. But for others, the idea that the US government would willingly work with criminals mobsters known for their involvement in murder, extortion, and smuggling was outrageous. Critics were quick to point out the ethical dilemmas involved in such a collaboration. The operation sparked a national debate about the morality of working with organized crime, even in the name of national security. The ramifications of this revelation were significant, not just in terms of public opinion, but also how it shaped the future of U.S. intelligence operations. The exposure of Operation Underworld set a precedent for questioning government secrecy and the lengths to which the government is willing to go to achieve its objectives. It also raised important questions about the relationship between law enforcement and organized crime. Lucky Luciano was said to have been behind a string of violent crimes, from serious assault to gruesome murder. It's said that he got his scar and drooping eye during a murderous attack in the 1920s. But up until his incarceration, he's said to have always been able to avoid justice, thus earning his lucky nickname. Public's fascination with Operation Underworld only grew in the years following its exposure. Books, documentaries, and academic studies have all explored the operation in detail, each raising new questions about the moral complexities of wartime decision-making. The operation's legacy endures as one of the most bizarre and intriguing chapters in U.S. history, reminding us that in times of war, even the most unlikely alliances can be forged. So what do you think? Was the U.S. government justified in teaming up with the Mafia to protect the nation's ports? Or did they cross a line that shouldn't have been crossed, no matter the stakes? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on this controversial slice of history. If you enjoyed learning about Operation Underworld, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more explorations into untold stories. Be sure to check out these links for more videos and resources on secret U.S. government operations, like Operation Midnight Climax, which was ran by George Hunter White, whom we spoke about earlier.